The best loadouts for Zero Build or Fortnite for Chapter 5 Season 1 Underground is what we're going to be going over in today's video. This season has been out for over a month now and all the micro adjustments have been made to balance items and also we've been given 4 new items. So now is the best time to determine what the best Zero Build loadouts are. For Zero Build loadouts, I normally say that there's 5 categories that you want to be carrying. Close range weapon, a long range weapon, movement item, cover item and and then as well heals. The sixth thing you always want to be carrying is a subscription to my YouTube channel. Subscribe down below. But this has changed in chapter five of Fortnite. Please still subscribe. <laughs> Obviously carrying these five items now for zero build can still be applicable and it's very practical for team modes for duos, trios or squads. But in solos, especially now more than ever, you can mix and match your loadout because of abilities, the map and how OP some items are. But more on that stuff later. Firstly, I'll be starting off with the items that you want 100% carry no matter what. And then I'll be talking about the better loadouts versus what you can swap out. So for consistent things that you absolutely want want to carry their heals, a specific close range weapon and a movement item. You have to carry items from these three categories in order to win pretty much this season. Obviously you can win without them but it's going to be a lot harder and a lot less likely. Every zero build loadout this season should contain the Frenzy Auto Shotgun. It's the best close range gun we have and potentially one of the best close range fast rate of fire guns that we've ever had in Fortnite. It has a micro higher DPS of damage than the drum shotgun ever did, and its individual shots deal more damage overall. The only drawback of this item is the reload time, but that shouldn't be an issue when you're not reloaded and someone comes to third party you. Because not only do you use code ONI in the Fortnite item store, but you should always have a movement item. So reload time is gonna no longer be an issue because in this loadout, you'll have movement to get away to an area where you can reload or to rotate so it's easier to reload. Any movement item this season is better than no movement item, but the best one to carry overall in chapter five of season one is the grappler blade in Fortnite. It can break bushes, it can flush people out who are hiding inside of bushes, it can break the riot shield's block, make people die from fall damage, knock people away from you, allow you to take height, plus it has unlimited uses. If you tried this item out at the start of the season and you didn't like it at first, make sure you give it a second go. It's one of the best movement items that we've ever had in Fortnite, it's basically like the ODM gear meets the grappler. Now if you don't have a grappler blade, shockwaves are going to be your next best bet. This is because the other movement items that I'll list shortly can't move you super far and the reason shockwaves aren't best because they don't have unlimited uses. Shockwaves have the ability to allow you push fast and also sporadically, so that means that people can't easily track you, move away from someone who's about to be in your face. This sporadic movement means it's harder for them to track you unless they were far away from you when they started shooting, in that case they can easily see where you move. Flowberry Fizz is the next best movement item. Not only is is it 100 shield, but basically, in essence, 20 flow berries. This gives you the zero grab effect that you would get if you took a flow berry from only using five shield from this item. Do note, it takes a lot longer to pop a little bit of this for the zero grab effect in comparison to berries. And if you're in a pinch, you'll probably die before you're able to use it. But if you have the right positioning, the right angles, not only will it make it easier for you to win a close range fight as you'll be virtually impossible to track while mid air, because you're jumping around someone's head and people typically don't fight like that. It can also get you across the map and on top of buildings a lot faster. Blowberries are in the second last position for best movement item. They're not bad, but compared to the others, not as good. With the zero grab effect and the shields, it can help you dominate in fights, especially if you're in fencing fields. Always use one of these before getting in a fight. Both Blowberries and Flowberry fields can be paired with other movement items. With Shockwaves, the Grappler Blade, the Crash Pad Junior, and on top of that as well, launch pads. The worst movement item in Zero Build this season is the Crash Pad Junior. This item's a lot better suited for build mode of Fortnite, and although it can be paired with the berries or fizz, its restricted movement is only really good off spawn. One of the best ways to use this item is throwing it down, sprinting, and sliding into it. You can travel 50 meters if you don't have the flow berry effect. If you do have the flow berry zero grab effect, you'll go about 100 meters. When it comes to heals in chapter five, season one of Fortnite, shield fish are the best heals to carry. This is based on 
the speed it takes to consume one in order to get shield, which means if you get put in a pinch mid fight, you can get some of your shield back really, really fast. As a side note, remember you don't have to go fishing in order to get this item. You can also get this item from coolers and ice machines, but the spawn rate for these items is not 100%. The next best heal to have is the more common big pots. This is one of the first seasons ever where big pots are one of the best heals to carry in game. This is because of the following four things. Firstly, you can move while taking them now, which means they're a lot more practical and you're not standing still for a long period of time. Secondly, if you have a medallion, minis are practically useless because the medallion will always heal that 50 shield no matter how many of them you have. Third of all, because it's been buffed recently, it means it's gotten a reduced reduction time to take, meaning you don't have to sit there for three seconds to take it. Say if you only need 25 shield for it, that time is halved. And lastly, the reason you want to carry big pots over other hills this season is you always want to have 200 HP this season because it's so easy to get sniper shot. And if you get sniper shot to the body, you're practically going to be one shot. And if you don't have a full 200 HP, you might actually be one shot just being sniped to the body. Just be careful when taking big pots this season not to accidentally cancel it so it doesn't vanish in thin air. I'll continually mention big pots rather than shield fish for the best heal from here on out because fish are more rare and require more effort. So it's a lot more likely that you'll be carrying big pots in Fortnite. Blowberry Fizz is the next best heal. It's the best if you don't have movement, but considering it only gives you 100 shield and it isn't the fastest to take, I'll make sure to carry this item typically with another healing item or only in team modes where you can also heal your teammates. After that, I'll take minis. They're only really good off spawn and if you do have a medallion, they aren't gonna be doing much for you. Blowberries are the next best shield because if you don't have shield, people will push you faster as they'll see you as an easy target. If I ever shoot someone and I notice they don't have shield, I know their health is low. Now for heals, we're gonna be moving into the white health category. The next best heals to carry are floppers. They're the absolute cream of the crop due to the speed it takes to take one and the amount of health it gives you. Medkits are really good now too. Based on the time to take reduction, being able to take a partial amount of them, bandages are now one of the worst heals to carry, obviously followed by all of the fruit. Fruit and vegetables just don't stack as easily and it's very hard to find all of one amount. If you're not counting flowberries as fruit and vegetables and how long it takes to eat how many fruit and vegetables in order to get 100 or 200 HP and how hard it is to get full stacks of, this is why they're the worst healing item. So at this point in the game, you want the grappler blade, an auto frenzy shotgun, and typically big pots. When it comes to long range items in the game this season, it's all user preference. There are six combos that are better than anything else, but any range gun this season is really good. The best combos to carry right now alongside your auto frenzy shotgun, your grappler blade, and obviously your healing item are a thunder burst with a sniper or a lock on pistol with a sniper or a striker assault rifle with a sniper or a nemesis with a sniper or a nemesis or a striker assault rifle just by themselves. This is all user preference because all of these combos are really, really good. It just has to do with your play style, your aim and your positioning for what works best for you. I prefer the following three, a striker, just by itself, a nemesis just by itself, or a striker with a sniper. The reason I like a striker with a sniper is if I hit a body shot with a sniper rifle, I'm able to spray someone down with a striker AR very easily from long range very fast in order to finish them. It's important to remember snipers are really great, but if you choke that shot at the wrong range, you're going to get beamed. High risk, for high reward. The reason I like the standard Nemesis alone is it can be really accurate at long range. I don't like the Nemesis myself with the sniper rifle because it has a slower rate of fire and it's really good at those same ranges. So sometimes I'll use it at sniper distances and having to choose in between two guns for the same distance is something that I never really enjoy in Fortnite. If you're struggling to hit shots this season with the striker assault rifle and you haven't tried the Nemesis much, give it another go. The recoil is really good for this gun and it's very heavily underrated. The striker stands alone is really good too because this gun is an absolute beast. It has the highest DPS damage per second for any AR that we've ever gotten in the game. The striker is the best long range overall due to its versatility. It can beam with the right lead at range and can test and even outperform SMGs at close range. A lot of players are very hyped right now with the Thunderburst paired with a Sniper 2, especially when using the right mods on a Thunderburst SMG. However, more people in build mode prefer this and also having to time the burst correctly doesn't work with my playstyle and it may not work for yours also. I really don't enjoy it. The Hyper SMG is really good also, even underrated. It doesn't have the same 
range as the Thunderburst SMG, and I believe it's just better for build modes, and that the other combos I mentioned previously are better. The Enforcer AR is also really good, but much too slow to compete for me. It has high damage, but damage as a trade-off isn't good enough when the rate of fire is that slow and that higher damage just isn't enough. The Ranger Pistol is really good, just not as good as some guns this season. It can be a great SMG assault rifle hybrid or substitute, but the other guns are just better, so that's why the pistol falls behind. The Lock-On Pistol can be considered underrated too because some people haven't tried out this gun enough. I used to hate this gun until I used it more this season. The trick is to use this gun as just a fast rate of fire pistol and not worrying about the lock-on effect. It doesn't have that much of a long range, so you really wanna be careful of what range you start using this gun at. Medium to close range is best because the lock-on pistol just doesn't work well at long ranges. The riot shield, a lot of people are finding overpowered this season. I've only lost about two fights to them in awkward indoor fights off spawn when I don't have full shield. They're really easy to beat. All you have to do is absolutely spam them with an SMG or striker assault rifle. The block will break, the person will be wide open, and you'll have a free target. Not to mention, if you use movement, you can get behind a person blocking who's moving really slowly, easily spray them in the back or in the top of the head. And also, if you have a grappler blade, you can just hit people with one shot with the attack in order to break their block. Something about this though really depends. I believe console input for this item actually is meta. Based on people's play style and being able to switch between items faster on PC, due to unlimited capability with a keyboard, means that people on PC will have a lot easier time taking this out than people on console. Will. Just remember if you're using this item on console that you are slowed down a lot whenever you aim down sights and your back is completely wide open. So someone could easily spray you in the back or easily headshot you when you're focused on someone else in a fight. Tunnel vision can be a serious case of being sent back to the lobby. Bunkers this season are not necessary at all in Zero Build. Based on the way that zone pulls and how the map is designed, this is one of the first seasons ever where I feel really, really comfortable without them. Another reason why bunkers aren't very viable this season is because not only can they get destroyed really, really easily from high DPS guns, if you don't purely use them to set up, for example, rotating to dead side of zone, throwing it down, shooting people in front of you and you just throw it down anywhere without proper planning throughout the entire game, your back's wide open and you're very easy to get headshot sniped. Snipers are just way too good. They're too easy to use and they're too common for the bunkers to be really, really practical. But that doesn't mean that bunkers are bad. I still use them when I have a free slot or if I don't have movement items, bunkers are an actual great substitute. Do note that bunkers work best in team modes like duos, trios or squads. This is because if your teammate goes down, you'll be able to res them and you guys can carry other items for each other. For example, one person carries a sniper, the other person carries bunkers. Clingers are super overpowered this season, but they work best off spawn to either destroy a boss at the second stage right when they spawn in the two red goons, or just to use on other people off spawn who are about to go into a vault or haven't got full shield. Once it gets to later game, it's not worth carrying these items because there's just a lot better items to carry. The only time I would pick this item up, of course, is if you have an empty slot. EMPs are not really worth it this season at all. They're very easy to dodge. They're not the easiest to target. You can easily deal damage to yourself. Considering you need to crack that overshield on top of normal shield, you have to throw multiple of them to do any considerable amount of damage. Pretty much takes too much time. And by the time you go to pull out a second one, you're either A, gonna be getting rushed by the person you threw it at, or B, the person you threw it at is gonna be gone. EMP grenades only really work well off spawn and on bots in order to conserve ammo. They don't do a lot of damage to bots. So let's break this down more so it's a lot more simple to understand. But before that, I have to mention this very important note. Pick up every gun. You are not always going to find the perfect loadout or your favorite gun, and it's a lot better to have a gun to have a chance at surviving than it is to have no gun. The reason I am mentioning this is because way back in chapter two, when I was streaming on Twitch, I was playing random duos and a kid was dropping all of their brick and all of their metal. This is before zero builds. When I asked them why, they said they watched an Ali A video and Ali A said that wood is the best build. So they weren't even carrying other builds. Just because something is better doesn't mean don't carry anything else. Something is always better than nothing. Fill up those slots gamers. We are out here being 
supporters in Fortnite. This season as well, it's important to mention you don't need to carry shield this season because of medallions. If you have three or more medallions, dropping shields is more of an acceptable outcome. For me, typically when I have one to two medallions, I'll only have one slot filled with heals, otherwise you're wasting those slots. Before we get into the very, very specifics, I need to mention you don't always need to carry sniper and you don't always need to carry cover. This season is one of the best seasons to carry double movement items or double heals. Typically I do this and I highly, highly recommend it. So now I will summarize in easiest terms possible the five best items for loadouts and their different combinations. Because we've already gone over why to use these items, I won't be going over that. And do note these variables do change a lot with team modes, like ARs being more viable and bunkers being more useful. For example, the bunker point I went over earlier, raising your teammates. The Frenzy Auto Shotgun, any SMG or pistol, the better of the lot being the burst SMG or the lock-on pistol, with a sniper, grappler blade, and big pots is a great loadout. The Frenzy Auto Shotgun with a striker assault rifle or a nemesis, and a grappler blade, flowberry fizz, and big pots is another great loadout. The Frenzy Auto Shotgun with a striker assault rifle, a sniper rifle, a grappler blade, and big pots. Or if you're absolutely dominating and you have a lot of medallions, the Frenzy Auto Shotgun, the striker assault rifle, the sniper rifle, grappler blades, and flowberry fizz using these three plus medallions to heal you, not carrying better heals. Those are the best standalone combinations of items that you want to be carrying. If you're playing console, the right shield can easily replace carrying an SMG or pistol. If playing team modes, having one of your teammates carry three guns, one of them being a sniper, and yourself carrying two guns with bunkers will lead to more success. The second thing to do while carrying the loadouts that I previously just mentioned is to mod guns to your preference. Some things for gun mods are obviously better than others, but having a scope that you like is the most important thing for preference. The last thing is to make sure that you're subscribed. Only 3% of people who watch my videos are currently subscribed. Join the community for not only just more Fortnite, but more tips, news, gameplay, entertaining content, and finally, stream we can interact with me live. Remember as always to take care of yourselves and I catch you guys on the flip side. Bye.